You're listening to Beyond Technique, the podcast that empowers photographers to bring their businesses to the next level. Hello and welcome to Beyond Technique, brought to you by Platypod, PhotoFocus, and Skip Cohen University. This is Shamira Young and I'm joined by my co-host and chief of creativity, Skip Cohen. Skip. Wow. Chief of creativity. Do I, do I get a raise with that? We'll work on that. We'll talk about that. Okay. Like <laughs> COC, Chief of Creativity. Okay. Hey, we have a great program today. Um, yes. It's December, and we're going to wrap up the year with a great guest and topic. Monica Royal is in the house and joins us today. We're going to talk about her work. We're going to talk about that line between photography and fine art. And as some of you know, listening to these podcasts, who knows what else is going to come up in the conversation. She is an incredibly talented artist with a passion for macro and based out of sunny Southern California. Her images leave people in awe, whatever her subject matter. She's an educator, a photographer, an artist, a mom, and has become a good friend to so many of us in the industry. And while I'm sure there are days that are challenging, I've never seen her not smiling. So there's that great line about if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. In fact, it's credited to everybody from Steve Jobs to Confucius. Uh, well, that's Monica. And whether she's capturing and creating or teaching and sharing, she totally loves the craft. Her images take us into parts of the world that are all around us, but we never look close enough to see them. So Monica... If I haven't screwed something up in technology here, it's going to be time for your lips to move. Welcome to Beyond Technique. Welcome. I'm leaving right now because I can't I can't match that. I feel like I'm only going to disappoint. That intro was just so lovely and beautiful. Bye. Oh, it was only five bucks. I got it from the Monica Intros website dot com. Awesome. It was, it was worth the five dollar investment. <laughs> That's cool. No, you really do. You. Come on, you, you know, it, admit that you love this stuff because it's that passion that comes through. Um, I can't remember what I watched you online about a month and a half ago. Um, what program was it? Um, you, were, you were teaching were online and, and, I, Facebook, and I caught Facebook your program. Lives? Yeah, Facebook Live, right? Is that yeah, what we were doing? Right. Todd Nettlehorst and I were doing that? That was it. <clears throat> and, <Yeah. clears throat> and it just comes through loud and clear how much you love what you do with a camera in your hands. Yeah, I have to say you're right. <laughs> I mean, there it is. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's what I would do in my spare time if I had an eight. I mean, I do it because I, I have to do it. It's my job and I love it. But I am actually genuinely fascinated with the small world. So I kind of have to do it. Well, you're great at it, Monica. And, and that's why we're so excited to have you on the show. It's funny because earlier this week we posted about you and I'll actually in the show notes for this, we'll do a little cross promotion and we'll link to, uh, the blog post that we published on Skip Cohen university about you. And at the time I did not realize I'd actually have a chance to talk to you for this podcast. And so it is so cool to kind of, I feel like I got a peek into your mind with the blog post that we wrote about you and the way that you work and how you like to spark conversation with your macro photography. And then to be able to talk to you is just, I'm excited. So Thanks. Let's, right. I know it's, I yes. love how this is working out. This is like serendipitous. <laughs> right? It's so oh. awesome. And you know, you mentioned on your about page on your website that you are fortunate enough to be living your dream. And I'd like to hear about, your background and how you ended up, how you got your start with fine art photography and how you ended up doing what you're doing today, living your dream. Okay. Well, it all started <laughs> when um, I found myself in a position in my life in which I, well, was in a different country because I'm Canadian. So uh, I, I moved here and uh, my marriage ended and I had to get a job overnight and I have a bachelor's degree from a Canadian university in criminology and criminal justice from Canada, if you didn't already <clears throat> get that. So it was useless here. Wow. And I didn't want to work in that field anyway. It was very unfulfilling. 
Um, I made the choice to, well, it's a longer story about <clears throat> why I chose that as a first career. So I decided to hang a shingle as a photographer. And I thought, well, that's been my hobby. So that's what I'll do. And that's all I know. And I didn't even know very much. And I thought that if you were a professional photographer, you were a portrait photographer. I thought mm. that's all there was, seriously. And so I did that for years and it was great in the beginning. And then a few things started to kind of develop that I that really went against the grain of my personality, parts of that business that I really didn't enjoy. But I noticed at the end of every portrait session, I would find myself down on the ground, in the dirt, or, you know, finding these small things. And my dad had given me like a, three or four generations ago, Tamron macro lens. Because he'd asked me one year, hey, what do you want for Christmas? And I was like, ooh. And that was a big purchase at the time. And so I said, yeah, I want to try one of those macro lenses. You get really close. And so after every portrait session, that's what I'd be doing. And then I noticed I'd, I'd be on the way to my portrait sessions, sessions. I'd be like, oh, one more minute, one more minute. I'm squeezing in a few macro images here and there. <laughs> And it wasn't until six years into that business that I realized fine art is an actual thing. It's like an actual genre that you can specialize in. And I was like, ooh, that could be fun. So I did some investigation, um, did lots of reading, lots of study, went and spent a week with Freeman Patterson. I, I bow right now. I know this is, there's no video here, but I'm literally bowing. He is a fantastic artist and mentor and he lives just down the road from my family um, on the Kingston Peninsula in uh, St. John, New Brunswick. So I was very inspired by him and I just kept studying and training and then in 2014 I was at a photo convention that was put on by professional photographers of California in Pasadena and there was uh, the Tamron booth was there at the trade show. And <clears throat> I actually love telling the story in great detail because I think it's hysterical. I, uh, I'd heard that sponsorship was also a thing that you could ask a company. Yeah, right. To, to work with you and to sponsor you. And so things were so rough at that time in my life that uh, I had to borrow an iPad from someone. And I put my images on it. And I made my way over to the Tamron booth like shuffling and just so nauseous inside and like ugh, so not confident. And I introduced myself to the sales rep in the booth. His name was Greg Becker. He's now a very good friend of mine. And I said, oh, uh, Monica Royal, like artist, and, you know, sponsorship. And I sort of stumbled <laughs> through this ridiculous introduction. And he gives me his card and he says, okay, well, come on back tomorrow and I might look at your work. I was like, okay, thank you so much. And I ran, I was in a cold sweat. And so I, I did, I realized later, years later that that was the first test. And so in tenacity, right? So I went back the next day, slightly more confident and uh, went through the borrowed iPad and showed him some work. And he said, okay. Excuse, excuse, excuse me. What? He said, "Oh, here's the here's the VP of marketing. Here's her contact. Here's her card. Call her tomorrow." Yep, you're in. Wow, and you're good. And I I I was floored, and you know I held it together and all professional and shook hands and thank you very much. And I walked away, and my first thought was, "I'm no one. Like I don't even barely deserve this." Which it was mm -hmm. an extreme reaction, of course, but you have to maintain some humility in this industry. That's kind of, that's the lesson, you know, that I would give to anybody years and years later. So that was my initial reaction. But I mean, then it just went from there. And then, you know, just more contacts and, and, and pushing through and shooting and publishing and schmoozing and talking and, um, you know, the rest is history, as they say. Wow. You know, there are a couple things I really like about about what you just said. Um, number one, you had the guts to actually put yourself out there because I know a lot of artists that are amazing, but they have no idea how to get their work in front of the right people. 
but you went and you showed up in person and then you came back when they asked you to come back. I mean, that takes a lot of guts and you did it through your nausea and your cold sweat. And it just, yeah. that's so cool. And then number two, just to back it up a little bit earlier, you mentioned your personality and how, how did you put it? When you were doing portrait sessions, it wasn't really a match with your personality. And the fact that you were able to analyze yourself and your work and what you love and then pivot your business according to that, that is a big deal because not everybody does that. And and that's just a testament to really how in tune you are with yourself and, and how much you love, you know, fine art photography. So hats off to you. That's really cool. Thank you. Thank well, you. The, I appreciate that. There are a couple of other pieces there I want to hit on. Um, one is that every time I get a group of especially relatively new and they're not necessarily young anymore young or old the bottom line is I'm talking to a bunch of new photographers and I will push them to go to every possible convention conference workshop whatever they can get to especially in your early years when you need to network so that was one thing you hit on in terms of going to that show but the other thing you hit on which is really much more important for people to remember Scott Bourne did a guest post for me a long time ago, and he talked about how photography is the great equalizer. It doesn't matter who you are, what you look like, how much power you have, how much money you have, what religion you are. Nothing matters. The reality is this is like the voice. You're going to be judged on the quality of your work. And that's what Greg saw. And it didn't matter that you might have been sweating bullets um, <laughs> and, and needed to run away the minute you finished talking to him, he had a chance to look at the work and see what you were putting into it and see what you were seeing um, through your eyes, which was that that's what he needed. And that's the one thing that pe so often people just forget about. And I've had so many, I, I've had several times over the years, not a lot, but I've had a couple of times where somebody said, Hey, you don't know me. I'm just a little guy. Um, well, the reality is it wasn't for all the little guys in this industry. We wouldn't have an industry. You know, there True. are only so many uh, Monica Royals and Tony Corbells mm -hmm. and Roberto Valenzuela's and Jerry Guionis and so many other people we've had on the show and, and Shamir and I know and respect and you know. The reality is this industry is driven by these relatively new photographers that, wow, I didn't know you couldn't do that. And they mm -hmm. they experiment and they try new things. And that's where that's the other thing that Greg probably saw was somebody here who had no idea just how good her work really was. So that's that's why you go to shows, everybody. And when they come back, that's why we're all going to be there the minute mm -hmm. we're, we're back out oh, there. But so, even without yeah. the shows, and that leads me right into a good question for you. It, it's downtime. And I've said it about 20 times just this week alone. Hunkering down is about your health, not about your business. What things are you doing during downtime to keep the momentum of your business and your skill set going? Well, in some ways, it's almost been easier because, listen, you can't, you can be a great photographer and you can love photography more than anything. But should you start a photography business? Well, that's a very different question than how much you like photography because it kind of doesn't matter how much you like photography. You better like business if you want to be a self employed photographer of any sort. Mm -hmm. And so, I, and so the point behind that is, you know, uh, you, you can't, there are no staff photography positions anymore. So you can't love photography and go get a job as a photographer. You, the industry has changed so much that you're your own boss and you run an entire business. So when, before COVID, I feel like such a small part of my business was actually making images, which is a drag. But, you know, there's tons involved in marketing and the dreadful bookkeeping and taxes and bleh, all that yucky stuff. So COVID has slowed down my life. I'm, it's such a mixed bag, right? Like, I'm so sad I'm not going to those conventions. And of course, I lost all my speaking gigs because there are no speaking gigs because there's no conventions. So I'm sad about losing that. But what it did was force me 
um, to use the time responsibly because I, I kind of am like that, you know, I don't really waste a great deal of time. And so I'm making tons of new artwork and it has infused a new life for me and it has it has it's shifted my priorities. And people always say that when they go through trauma and stuff. Oh, it shifted my priorities. But the truth is what I have really solidified is that I used to make excuses. Oh, why aren't you producing new work? I, it just takes so much time. And I'm so busy running the rest of the business. And that's just, I'm just over that. I, that's shifted big time. It does not take that much time to produce new artwork. It, when you're in it for a business, when you're in it for fun, then do whatever you want, whenever you want. But when you're in it for a business, just get over yourself and bookkeeping can wait. And if you move production of the artwork to the very top of uh, the importance level in your to-do list every day, you'll be more successful. You'll make more art, you'll publish more, people will see it, but if you're smart, you'll get better at it as well. You know, it's funny, you mentioned that your speaking gigs disappear, but there's another side to the pandemic that's shifted everything. And that's the fact that we've all gotten to learn uh, Zoom, Skype, right. um, you name it, FaceTime, yeah. live, um, yeah. and whatever else is out there. But I was talking to Michelle Salantano the other day who recently moved into a bigger studio. Mm -hmm. And it's not because her business has grown as much as it is because her business has changed. And she yeah. has to have room now to shoot video for teaching. So it's exactly. kind of it's kind of interesting. At the same time, everybody's speaking gigs disappeared. There's also a growing opportunity now, um, and all of us wishing we had stock in Zoom, um, <laughs> right? Because and that's changed know. so much, and and what you're sharing online becomes so significant. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the first groups to pivot so fast in April was out of Chicago, run by Chris Smith. Mm. And I was scheduled to fly to Chicago and, and participate in that three, a five day gig. And it was, I did it last year in Philadelphia and it was huge. And he shifted so fast. I think in six weeks, he put this online and it was massive. We had over 850 people from all over the world attend this three day online party. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was just spectacular. And I was really impressed with how fast he put that together and then we put another one together in which I partnered with uh, my macro buddy, crazy guy, Todd Nettlehorst. And we did that with out of Chicago in September. And so, yes, the industry has changed and I'm glad to hear Michelle did that. I admire her because I'm doing the, the exact same thing next month when I move, moving, I'm setting up a whole studio. We're going to do live stuff. We're going to bring people back together and have less of a, you know, here's my slides, blah, 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 less of a presentation and more togetherness because I, I've also embraced that. There are ways that we can be together. If we can't have the conventions yet, we can be together with all this technology. So embrace it. So here we go. Jump, you know? Love it. Love it. And I'm curious. So fine art wise, how do you keep your finger on the pulse as far as the latest trends, uh, what people are interested in, or do you just create work that you like and then put it out there so it attracts whoever likes it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know what the trends are. Actually, to be honest, okay. I, I can't really. Um, care in terms of if you said to me hey i i'm you know i've just come out of the forest and i don't know what's going on in photography what's going on i mean i could tell you who i watch and who i follow but to actually say kind of statistically here's what's happening right now mm -hmm. i don't give that too much energy i do live on instagram and i and google images and when I'm stuck for inspiration, I will definitely go to both of those platforms and then I'll scroll and scroll through macro and, and then I'll find a, a, an inspiration, a leaping off point. And even though I want to say this about copying or emulating, because I think it's important, try to copy people's work. Just try. 
because you can't <laughs> is my point. But if you try, it's a consider it not a copy, consider it a source of inspiration because I fully believe your artwork comes from, I wish you could see me. Well, not now because I'm in my pajamas and I look like hell, but <laughs> I'm pointing to my head and my heart. Your artwork comes from your brain and your heart. So your passion and your excitement is what you put behind it. That's from your heart. But your head is your frame of reference. So even if we shoot, we have the same thing we put in front of us. Okay, here's here's a piece of glass and here's some kind of liquid. Make it. We're not going to make the same thing because we're not the same person. And so when you need inspiration, absolutely go to those web pages and those platforms and just start scrolling and just start looking at things and then go make your own because it will happen. It will come from within you. Well, let's, I want to, I want to stick with that topic just for a second more. Talk about things you do to stay focused on what's in your heart. I mean, right now we are bombarded. I mean, prior to the election, I was saying if the pandemic didn't get us listening to the politicians would, <laughs> um, <laughs> Sheila and I have become the most, or at least I have anyway, the most uninformed American on the planet. Cause I refuse to watch the news anymore. Cause I don't believe any of it. Yeah. What things have, what, what, what do you do to stay focused on how much you love this stuff and what's in your heart versus letting the noise in that, I mean, the whole world has become one giant Grinch. Yeah, it's not a cool thing. You're exactly right. So in September, I had um, I had an experience. Um, my parents in Eastern Canada both got sick at the same time. So I jumped on a plane and I had to quarantine because Canada is very serious about this, which is why they have lower numbers. But anyway, so I had to I had to quarantine. So I was at my family's cottage in the woods on a river, I'm not complaining, for two weeks in isolation, and. I slept the least there in two weeks than I than I do ever because I was so excited. I had no one else to consider. So I just cooked great food, had wine at lunch, um, <laughs> did whatever I want, but I, I just I just made images all the time. And it was really, really fun. So and there was no news. I didn't watch the news at all. I just had music constantly. And I realized two things. I like myself much better than I thought. So that's good because you better do that. You better like yourself. And two, when you do shut off all the noise, including what Shamara was talking about, you know, do you follow trends? No, because I just want to make what I make. And, and I was raised with a lot of criticism and a, actually a lot of, well, yeah, I mean, kind of a lot of criticism and a, a lot of this drive for perfection, like you should do better, you should do better, you should try more, which is probably why I don't really waste a ton of time. I'm, I'm very industrious, which is to my downfall sometimes. And my family's, <laughs> my children especially, sometimes don't want to be as industrious as I am, but I grew up with that different message. And so it, it pushes me to keep going. But that two week period really solidified you know what, it, it doesn't matter how people react to the art. It doesn't really even matter what they say or what happens or if it sells. It just matters if you're having fun, which sounds childish and simplistic, but I don't care. It's the truth. I think if you're an accountant and you think that job is fun, then you're going to be a happier person. Your business will be more successful because you'll attract happy people. And there is just profound negativity in the world right now. And we have a choice. We're intelligent human beings. You can choose to go towards that and participate in it and perpetuate it. Or you can choose to go away from that. Last year, January, you know, people do the New Year's resolutions. And I don't really exactly believe in that. But it was an excuse to do the following. I stopped saying when people would say, oh, hi, Monica, how you been? Oh, I'm so busy. Oh, I'm so busy. That was always my answer because it was always true. But I stopped saying that because it's negative, isn't it? And so now people say, how are you? And I say, you know, I mean, I say the truth. If it's a bad day, it can be a bad day. That's fine. 
but I've stopped saying, oh, I'm so, I'm so busy because it's, I just, I just find that negative and give me a break. Who's not busy? Like, who's going to say, Hey, Shamira, how are you? How's it going? Oh, it's great. I do nothing all day. <laughs> it's awesome. Like nobody's going to say that, right? Everybody's some degree of busy by their own perception. So the bottom line is the takeaway is really your art should be fun. And if it's a slog and you're really struggling to produce, then you need to rethink your approach. In fact, maybe it's not even the thing you should be doing, period. Or maybe you're just not photographing the thing that you really, really want to photograph. That is so great. And and I love your point about busyness. Busy. People say I'm busy. They almost, I notice, wear it like a badge of pride sometimes, even though it can be this negative thing where you're just in this constant state of overwhelm. That is the standard answer that a lot of people, including myself, you know, they say, how are you doing? Oh, I'm so busy. But to take a moment and to look into yourself and what your heart likes to create and then to build your business from there is that is genius that is fantastic like you think more people would do that but a lot of people just slog through years of a job or a business that they actually don't enjoy um instead of looking at what is fun imagine that doing mm-hmm. something fun every day mm-hmm. and i just kind of want to switch gears a little bit and ask you about platypod which They are a sponsor of the show, and it is so fascinating to see how this small, this revolutionary, essentially this little tripod is is changing how photographers are working Um, from the various angles that you can get or using it, hooking up lights to it. So for you, how are you using your platypod in your workflow? Well, as we speak, I have um, a a Savage Universal LED light panel plugged in because I do a lot of zooms. I mean, obviously, we're not zooming today, but I have that plugged in and the platypod sitting on my desktop. So that's what it's doing today. Very cool. But when I was in quarantine, um, and that's the the video that I was going to post later today, um, when I was in quarantine in the woods, uh, Skip had just sent me the platypod, so I'd never used it. So I took it to Canada and busted it out of the packaging. And between that and my my new, I got a Canon uh, EOS R, the mirrorless last year. Holy mackerel! The the the, I mean, I'm not 20 anymore, so I can't contort into these positions <laughs> for outdoor macro the way I used to. So this thing, I mean, I could be talk about worm's eye view, I could be literally on the ground, in the dirt, um, on the beach, whatever. And because of the, you know, the screen on the camera, I could flip it towards me and then it's on the platypod, which is on the ground. So, I mean, I have grass like in the foreground and that, that prospect, that new, um, uh, what do you call it? Like that, that new capability to get images like that. Oh, I just went nuts. I mean, I just, I, you know, it was a whole new vantage point. I was like having, it was like going 30 years back in time physically because I could get into these places that I couldn't get into before. It was very, very exciting. So true. It it changes your perspective. In fact, uh, Rick Salmon did a portrait about a year and a half ago on a trip to China where he photographed a woman at a loom weaving and he photographed it from the floor looking up through the loom which is something that none of us, nobody would do. You know, you're going in, you're going to do an environmental portrait and you're going to shoot it at a certain level and you're going to bring in the the environment. And he did it in a very, very different way. And it does, it changes your perspective. Well, and that's awesome because think about, that's so inobtrusive. Think about how obnoxious it would be if he walked into that environment with like, hey, let me get down on my belly here with my body all splayed out and take a picture from that angle. I don't know if that's Rick's voice, but you see what I'm saying? It it makes yeah. it gives you the opportunity to be sly and to to get these perspectives that are far more interesting. I really don't want to see any image created from two feet off the ground to six feet off the ground. I've just seen it, right? We really need to mix it up. And so I love that this little gadget gives me the opportunity to do that. 
Well, we're looking forward to seeing more of your images. But I've got a I've got a question before Shamira kind of closes because we're kind of running out of time. These things go so fast. Let's talk about the things you have coming up in January, very spe- uh, specifically, so that people know where they need to go to um, check out everything that you're sharing online. What's coming up in January that's going to be different? Well, like I said, I'm launching this whole new studio location. And so I have decided to put, I put a few things on my webpage the other day. I'm going to do two, two days of image reviews. Now I know a lot of people do image reviews, but here's the difference. I'm constantly inundated with people who are like, Hey, my artwork is good. People say it's good, but it's not selling. And so they're like, what do I need to do to fix it? And I have boiled down a formula where you can make about three changes to any image and make it more sellable because there's some universal things that appeal to everyone regardless of subject matter. So I'm doing two days where I'm gonna offer these mini reviews and you bring your images to me online, obviously. We're gonna chat, I'll look at them and I'm gonna tell you what these three things are to make these three edit changes to your images to improve the possibility of sales because I kind of think I have my my finger on the pulse of that. And then the other thing is uh, January 24th, Sunday, I'm going to do a live shoot for my new studio space. So you're going to come online. Uh, I'm going to have, you know, big monitor there with uh, a moderator who's going to, you know, do comments. We're going to be, not do comments, but moderate the thing. It's going to be live streamed. So it'll be interactive. I'll show you my studio setup. We're going to take some new subject matter. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm literally making this up. Uh, um, but I'm going to show you from start to finish because the other pet peeve I have, you should see me. I'm like waving my hands right now because it's really a thing. So, you know, a pro comes and goes, oh, yeah, here's my slide. Here's what I do. Great. That's fantastic for getting to know them and being inspired. But how? How do they do it? How do you work with 2.8? How do you, what's, why use a cable release? What's camera shake? What's that all about? So I really want to have full transparency and, and, and just really show everybody exactly how to do it because I'm not concerned about secrecy or anything like that. I don't have anything to hide. I'll show you exactly how I do what I do with water drops because you can't replicate my artwork because it goes back to your artwork comes from your brain and your soul, your heart. So that's what we're going to do on January 24th. And I'm super excited because I miss people. I miss my creatives. And where can people, where do they go to find out more information about these events or if they want to sign up? Um, Yeah, webpage. So uh, monicaroyal.com. And then today I'm going to put it all over. I'll put the links all over my social media. I'm Monica Royal everywhere. So thank goodness I have that name. And people ask me all the time, is that your real name? That is an awesome (laughs) <laughs> it really is. I'm lucky. a little jealous. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know. Shamira's pretty cool. <laughs> well, thank you. And I do want to make sure and ask our favorite final question, um, which is always so interesting now with everything going on in 2020 and how things are a little bit different. But what, what advice do you have for photographers who are just starting out today? What should they be doing? Well, pardon the pun, but they should be focusing. They should be focusing. (laughs) They should be focusing. I mean, if you want to be an accountant and a hobbyist photographer, cool. You want to be a full-time working professional photographer, focus. Pick a thing and do it exceptionally well. But you have to like it, right? You can't say, oh, well, I'll make more money as a wedding photographer than a fine art photographer. Possibly, but you better really, really like wedding photography or you will fail or you at least won't be as successful as you would be um embarking on an endeavor that really excites you and really floats your boat and so that's why i've stuck with with fine art so focus just be tenacious just keep going don't let anybody tell you no and if they do just brush them aside and move on to the next one and just keep going perfect advice wow Great advice couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Fantastic. And I do want to make sure and ask, 
Um, where can, and you kind of mentioned it before, but just to ask again, where can we find your work online in general? So uh, Instagram is Monica Royal. So is Facebook, um, Twitter, that's all Monica Royal. Uh, my webpage is Monica Royal. And I, you know, find me, follow me. It's so easy. And I respond to everybody because I genuinely like sharing these conversations. I find it actually really, really exciting. It's really exciting. Excellent. Excellent. And Skip, where can we find you online? I have to come up with something more creative because every time you ask that, <laughs> I say the same thing because it's always the same thing. Um, <laughs> everything I write is at skipcohenuniversity.com and Skip Cohen on Twitter and Skip Cohen on Facebook. And you'll also find both me and Shamara over at platypod.com. And that email is skip at platypod.com. And we're always interested in feedback and ideas and uh, maybe topics that you'd like us to have guests talk about on future episodes. Um, so drop us a line. And Shamara, as I always ask again, where do they go to find you? Yes, they can send me an email at shamira at photofocus.com. I spell my name every time because it's a little bit tricky. It's C-H-A-M-I-R-A at photofocus.com. We love getting ideas, feedback, questions. If you're listening and you have a photographer friend who you'd like to nominate to have on the show as a guest, then hit us up. This It drives how we move forward with this show. And we are excited for what's coming up with the show, especially as we move into 2021 and the amazing guests that we have on the show. And Monica, in case you didn't know, you're amazing. Thank you. Good stuff. <laughs> really, you shared a, no. so much great content today. Good stuff. Well, thanks. I'm glad. I appreciate the opportunity because, you know, it's lonely sometimes. It's, thank you both. You know, you're <laughs> gracious hosts and you're fun to talk to and you listen to me, which is so awesome. <laughs> well, hey, we are, we love listening to you and we're all in this together. Yeah, that's true. See, if we all had that mindset, I think it would just be more positive, but yeah. we're, we're on the upswing, right? We're starting to get yes. vaccinated. So we're going to, we're going to come out sooner than later and we'll see each other and we'll hug and love on one another and have conventions and conferences. And it's just going to be the biggest party. That is my hope for 2021. Well, that first convention, when when everybody feels that there's, you know, the all clear siren has rung or heard or made noise or whatever you want to call it, we'll all be there. That's going to be an amazing, <laughs> oh, that'll be an amazing so... event. Uh -huh, exactly. Oh. Yeah. Can't wait. Well, thank you again, Monica. And we want to thank our listeners as well for joining us. Please tell your friends about this podcast, especially if they want to improve their photography business and bring it up to the next level. We look forward to having you with us next time on Beyond Technique, brought to you by Platypod, Photo Focus, and Skip Cohen University. <laughs>